A very good afternoon to one and all, and welcome to PIDC's first ever Meet Our Experts session. This afternoon, um, I am Dr. Lahari, and joining me as co host today is Dr. Zaida, and our expert is uh, Dr. Fawaz Siddiqui. Thank you so much, Doctor. <clears throat> our uh, uh, topic today is um, related to diet and dental caries. And Dr. Fawaz is currently uh, the head of pediatric dentistry at Penang International Dental College. He has completed his master's in pediatric dentistry in 2014 and has been actively teaching ever since. Uh, he is recently elected as a member of the faculty of dental trainers of the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh. And Dr. Fawaz is also a qualified public health specialist. And this makes him uh, even more valuable in today's discussion uh, on a topic which is a global oral health issue, uh, especially in children. So uh, I pass it on to Dr. Zaida. Uh, today's topic is eat well, teeth well, diet and dental caries in children. So according to the Ministry of Health, the prevalence of dental caries in preschool is 71.5%. And in 12 years, it is 33.3%. So I would like to start by asking Dr. Fawaz, how does diet affect the teeth of children? Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Lari, Dr. Zaida. Uh, thank you to management of PIDC for giving me this opportunity to be an expert on your program. Uh, and dental caries is indeed a global issue, not here in Malaysia, but globally it's a, a chronic disease and it is more towards being a lifestyle disease. When I say lifestyle disease, it doesn't mean it is the disease of the rich or it is a disease of the poor. What it means is how you choose your lifestyle, how what you choose to eat decides your lifestyle and that is how your teeth get and gets uh, affected. So like Dr. Zaida says, what is the role of diet in caries? So let me just uh, very briefly explain to you how the caries happen, okay? So you have your tooth, then you have these bacteria in your mouth and then you have this sugary food, which the bacteria uses for its own uh, reproduction, its own energy source for its own survival. And the end product of this use of sugar is the acid. And this is the acid that dissolves the tooth structure. Okay. So now what you decide to eat decides how your teeth will be. Say, for example, there is this concept that in all these three things, the tooth, the bacteria, and the diet, all right? Can you tell me among all these three, which is already present in the oral cavity, which is already there in the mouth? Uh, I think it should be the bacteria. Absolutely. And the diet that we eat, the food that what food. we eat. Mm, yeah. so if you see in this whole equation of uh, tooth, of course the tooth has to be there because mm. there will be no tooth, there's no caries, right? So tooth and then the bacteria and then these diet and then the end result could be caries or mm. it could be healthy teeth. So if you see the tooth is already there in the mouth, mm. the bacteria is already there in the mouth. Okay. The bacteria which causes caries is in everybody's mouth. It's there in my mouth, in Dr. Saida's mouth, Dr. Lari's mouth, in all the viewers' mouth. Mm. Right? It's already there. But what is not there in your mouth is the diet. Right. Right? Mm. So the diet is the deciding factor whether you will get caries or not. Because the other two you already have in your tooth, uh, in your mouth. Right. So this yeah. makes the diet a very, very important uh, equation, uh, part of the equation. All right. Now, if you take uh, food that the bacteria can use for its own reproduction, for its own metabolism, for its own survival, for its own growth, then you're going to have this acid production, which is a byproduct of this whole process. And you will have right. dental caries. But if you eat food that the bacteria cannot use, then you will not have dental caries. Right. So. Um, um, Dr. Fawaz, as a mother of young children, I feel that my kids snack a lot and, and sometimes um, so, so a, a lot like, you know, they're always constantly want to eat something or the other. So how does all this snacking actually affect teeth? OK. Uh, what happens with uh, snacking that we must understand is why do children snack in the first place? Right now, the answer to this question is that the children are not having their meals properly 
and because they're not having their meals properly they feel hungry immediately after the meals and then it's already past the meal time and then they want something quick to eat and that's that is how the snacking happens all right now when you have the snacking right it's only giving you part of the nutrition right it's only giving you um some high carbohydrates right it's not giving you the protein and the fats and the minerals and the vitamins that the body wants that right so you children tend to eat more of snacks trying to compensate for the need for the body okay and this is where it comes on what you snack decides the factor whether you will have acid so i have here with me is some common snacks that we normally have at our house okay if you see here in this plate i have uh, some biscuits okay some cream biscuits and i have some regular biscuits i have some chocolate bars i have some potato chips wow i have <laughs> very Some interesting all, all things that little children would love to eat exactly exactly now what i'm going to tell you i'm just going to ask you of all these things that you see right either it's sweet okay yeah. great hmm. and either it is one more factor one more property this uh, food item have so i want you to choose any item mm -hmm. and try okay choose any yeah, item I and try think i'll take the bis oh yeah i'll take the chocolate Okay. Yeah, thanks. I can take a gummy bear. Okay, I want you to have it and enjoy it, and then I'm going to ask you a question. I like the taste. <laughs> Who doesn't? Hmm. Who doesn't? Even I. Especially children, I'm sure. Absolutely, hmm. absolutely, absolutely. You'll be surprised that studies have found out that children have the highest number of taste buds. Oh. Interesting. Yes. I didn't know that. Absolutely, mm -hmm. they have the highest amount of taste buds, and how our skin sheds and new skin comes. Similarly, the taste buds have been shown that they shed, and they're replaced by taste buds. So the children have the maximum amount of taste buds, maximum amount of nerve endings in the taste buds, and that is why they want to taste everything. Okay. Right. That is the reason why they keep putting things in their mouth, trying to taste things. Right, and they're not afraid to taste things. with over a period of time the taste buds gradually exfoliate mm -hmm. right and they are not replaced and by the time you reach your adolescence you already lost some of your taste buds by the time you reach your old age you also already have lost quite a few and that is why most of the time the food starts feeling tasteless mm -hmm. and that is why you need to put lot of uh, spices in the food to you know have that taste when you are older but small children even a small amount of uh, spicy food can you know um give them uh, uh the same hiccups okay so that is uh, that is very important uh, so regarding my experiment now mm. did you all enjoy it yeah yeah yes. we did mm -hmm. yes, there is no two ways about it the children will also enjoy now tell me when you used um, and when you chew on it was the food stuck somewhere yeah yes okay i don't know just just uh, point out to for the for our viewers where did the oh you want to have another one <laughs> no no thank you um, <laughs> yeah thank you i i think somewhere on the somewhere on top and bottom here okay on the upper uh, yeah the back of the t back of the t right yeah. how about you always say since i have used my left side so it's mostly on the back tooth back tooth so that oh, is what happens like okay equally, is it yeah. still there or it's it come out I think I tried to use my tongue yeah, to I get rid of it, but then I still think there is something left. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. So what I'm trying to tell you is that these kind of foods, which are highly processed, mm. okay, sweet, mm. okay, they are made up of refined carbohydrates, not mm. regular carbohydrates. What we have in wheat is highly refined carbohydrate, and it's sweet and it's sticky and it sticks onto your tooth. Okay. Now, like Dr. Larry said, you she used um, I'm using yeah, tongue yeah, to yeah, get yeah, rid exactly, of it. Yeah. Hmm. Children don't use their tongue to get rid of it. Yeah. It just stays there, okay. and if it stays there, right, it starts to cause caries. So eating this has caused your pH of your oral cavity, okay, okay to become acidic, okay, and that's not good. And after this, the mouth will take about thirty to thirty minutes to one hour to get the uh, pH back to normal. right so till that time your tooth is in acidic medium and that is what the bacteria that we talk about is called as uh, mutant streptococci okay and that is a bacteria <clears throat> which survives in acidity 
it survives in acidic uh, environment so these bacteria would love the environment and they produce lactic acid butyric acid a lot of other acids and that causes the demineralization of the that basically causes the whole so you see this is the problem with snacking when you snack with the uh, high uh, refined sugar products mm -hmm. right so it's it's is that bad so uh, i wanted to ask is there something called safe snacking absolutely absolutely so like i said uh, when it comes to snacking basically the children are missing their balanced diet meals because they're not having it they are depending on snacking for the energy needs right and when the energy needs are getting from such tasty mm -hmm. food i mean i would love to have those mm -hmm. correct this, true true yeah, yeah. has it happened to you when you're watching a movie you kind of finish one yeah, packet yeah, of biscuits you have no control over what you're eating exactly so okay. children also have no control okay we have a threshold for sweet things <clears throat> children do not have threshold for sweet things they yes. can have plenty of biscuits even realizing that they're getting you know yeah. sick in the stomach because it's too sweet they don't have right. because the nature has made children in such a way as a survival mechanism that they tend to get attracted to high energy food mm. for survival that is how children are and that is how the mm, in our ancestors when mm. they were hunters and all they used to taste all the food the food which is sweet was considered okay the food uh, the food or the leaves or the fruits which used to taste bitter they did not like it because most of the poisonous uh, plants were always bitter Yeah. So the body is geared for sweet mm. things, okay? I think you you have a point. Yeah, that's true. So, so the children are mm. attracted to that is why the sugar addiction for children. Okay. So when it comes to snacking, so rule number one is give your children full proper meal at the proper time. Yes. They are full. They will not feel hungry. They will not ask for snacks. But if they feel hungry or they want to snack. we have some safe alternatives okay yes. now i'm going to show you the difference between these kind of snacks and an alternative snacks yes. okay so here you go oh wow okay so, so we have a healthy plate yeah <laughs> so here we have um, a banana then we have raw carrots raw cucumber and uh, apple apple so i want you to try and i'm going to ask you the same question okay thank you Nice and crunchy. It's okay. Hmm. Enjoying it's, it. It's crunchy, right? <laughs> yeah, you got the best apple available. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you the same question. Tell me where has the food got stuck? You chose an apple, right? A mm. slice of apple. You chose a slice of uh, carrot. Carrot. Now tell me where has it got stuck? We got to use this. I know where uh, it's not stuck anywhere. In fact, I think the one that the the biscuit or the chocolate that I got stuck, I think, is not there anymore. Also, exactly, exactly. This is the point that I'm trying to make here. These mm. foods are called as detergent food. Okay. These food, when you food. eat, yeah. mm. right, they clear off the mouth. Okay, and they never get stuck. All right. So the important thing here is that these food will clean your mouth in the first place, and they don't get stuck to your tooth. Now you will tell me this food is not sweet enough. Yeah. Okay. Now, like I told you, when the children are growing, by the age of one year, mm. they develop this preference for food mm. as early as one year. So normally, the literature says by the first uh, tooth erupts, that is the primary tooth, about nine months, they already have a preference. Mm. So it's the responsibility of the caretaker not to introduce such high sugary food mm. for young children. because once they get addicted or once they taste the sweetness of this food the sweetness of uh, say fruits here like banana mm -hmm. right they will find a gross difference and they will never prefer banana over the say the biscuits because it's so sweet and they are uh, you know genetically geared for sweet food mm -hmm. so they will never have banana so the caretakers <clears throat> the parents are responsible for right. ensuring the children have variety of natural food Yeah. right try to avoid the sugary food absolutely mm. these are highly refined processed food they are no good for the body mm. right so don't uh, make your children sugar addict by introducing ice creams <laughs> early in life right yeah. 
they normally have no parents are having ice cream and they suddenly want you know children to have a bite how do we avoid that okay the first thing is that you know like i told you dengue caries is a lifestyle disease yeah what you choose in your life will define your health hmm. similarly if you choose to have ice cream all day long and you know quite frequently then your child will automatically learn that lifestyle hmm. okay and that is the issue so like i told you snacking once in a while it's okay the sugary food i also have in my uh, mm. house i also enjoy them once in a while mm. but not regularly yeah not regularly yeah. so when it comes to regularly we are more into having some detergent food mm. okay and one food that i want to point out here is this slice of cheese slice of cheese okay now the funny part is this slice of cheese is made up of milk mm. okay of course this is a processed food right mm. but the most of it is solid milk this contains milk contains something called as casein mm. right and the pharmaceutical companies are using casein to come out with a product and they are selling the product asking people to apply it on their tooth and it contains casein and basically casein protects against uh, cavities mm. right so i'm telling you if you eat one slice that comes to about one ringgit mm. right not only are you giving casein to the teeth mm. but the goodness of the milk is also going inside the body which will produce other beneficial effect for the general body yeah. right so like again, again i am stressing the fact that we must go for wholesome food okay and not processed food now for example if you take you take uh, this uh, piece of banana okay it's a fruit it contains a natural glucose a natural uh, carbohydrate called as fructose mm-hmm. right so now fructose is also bad for the tooth mm-hmm. corn syrup mm-hmm. corn syrup is fructose okay but that is commercially made process right but this banana also contains fructose but this banana not only contains fructose but also contains vitamins right some minerals tend to forget that yeah right. true right? Natural, so if you have yeah. this piece of banana you are giving nutrition to the body when the body gets its full nutrition it wouldn't it will not want anything else yes and that is the reason why when you go have you don't have enough of balanced diet okay you tend to feel hungry even after having a full plate of uh, meal and if it is not balanced you will feel hungry same thing goes with the children so after having so much to eat they are still hungry because the body has not got their uh, the daily dose of vitamins and minerals and things like that sure okay <clears throat> yeah so um one of our viewers has asked a question dr fawaz saying that my child's milk teeth are going to fall off anyway uh, do i still need to take care of them okay i think it's a it's a, it's a great miss norma <laughs> okay the two evidence that children's teeth are important is that we have a full specialization in pediatric dentistry true true right? yeah. if it was not so important we would not have even had that god made uh milk teeth gave milk teeth was for a purpose mm-hmm. okay now a lot of purpose you already study in the books it's called uh, it's a uh, guiding guiding uh, post for the permanent teeth to erupt mm-hmm. okay and uh, it maintains a space in the arch for the teeth but what i'm going to tell you is that when the child is growing the jaws are small yeah okay so the god has given us smaller teeth the yeah. reason the god has given us teeth you could have given us a full set of permanent at mm. once but the idea is that the children must learn to chew on the food because if they do not learn to chew on the food they will have preference for soft food okay and if you see the difference between these two mm. is that your fresh fruits and vegetables you must chew yeah all right but this one even in one or two bite it kind of dissolves in the saliva mm. and then you can basically swallow So now the children who are cannot chew they like soft food and the soft food definitely is made up of processed uh, food typical example you can take is noodles mm-hmm. and it is soft food so children will avoid eating chicken they mm-hmm. will avoid eating chewing they mm-hmm. will avoid eating carrots they will avoid eating cucumbers because it involves chewing so the importance of primary teeth begins as soon as it erupts in the oral cavity that is the time you must introduce the semi solid food mm-hmm. so the jaws have to learn to chew on the food <coughs> if the mastication is proper mm-hmm. okay it helps in developing the reflex of swallowing okay okay and if your mastication is poor mm-hmm. then you will not be able to swallow right 
<clears throat> so there are so many children that we see in the clinic is that you know every time you give them chicken to eat and they cannot swallow and they would want to you know vomit okay. it out mm-hmm. but they cannot chew on it mm-hmm. the reason being they're not exposed to chewing when they had primary teeth okay so this chewing is very very important from that perspective so children who have begun to chew on food properly they will tend to chew on food more regularly rather than depend on soft uh, food for their energy needs right so these children will avoid chicken they will avoid meat <clears throat> they will avoid uh, green leafy vegetables because it involves chewing yeah. so so that's why it makes it very important that we take care of primary teeth absolutely well. so yeah. primary teeth is there the yeah. child will learn to chew otherwise he will be prone to caries all his life until we do something about true, it true, true, true. yeah okay uh, there are few candies which are available in the market which are claiming that uh, they are sugar free or gluten free so are they really good okay now no the now the typical example that i give to my students also is uh, about smoking okay now people used to they smoke right and when vaping came out into the market they said vaping is better than smoking okay right? that is how vaping was advertised and had uh, use spread out then we discovered the vaping itself is causing cancer right so the first place Yeah, the first thing first is you should never give your child sweet things and if you're giving sweet things try to be more on the side of less processed okay so if somebody is claiming that we have uh, sugar free and this, that means some more chemicals have been added to that food to make it sugar free right and we absolutely have no um, conclusive data whether these sugar free things are good for the body or bad for the body a typical typical example is xylitol Uh, xylitol is proven to reduce caries by a lot of its property but if you have too much of xylitol right it will give you uh, bloating and stomach upset stomach upset exactly so we try to avoid processed food for the children we don't want to expose their bodies to those chemicals right so when you have to make a choice keep it to the less processed part so i would uh, uh, advise you not to choose those uh, sugar free candies if you want to give candies give them the actual candies which contain the sugar all right but try to uh, you know change your lifestyle and try to control right so uh, we have another question from uh, miss aparna telang tuli she is asking us that are vitamin c drinks or tablets good for toddlers um, and she also has some other questions where she's asked us about how do we take care of baby's gums and should we and when should brushing be introduced okay Okay, I'll just break down this question into two. Yeah. Okay, the vitamin C part is uh, for toddlers. For toddlers, so I'm beginning to think toddlers are one who start to walk. Yes. So about one year old, mm-hmm. right? All your need for vitamins and minerals mm-hmm. they must come from the food. Sure. Okay. Now we are psychologically dependent upon supplements, mm-hmm. right? Because we are not very confident on the food that we eat. Yeah. Because we are not taking enough interest to make sure our food is balanced yeah right so we go to the market we buy whatever we see whatever we like we never look at the nutritional value of the things mm-hmm. right and we randomly buy and then we are worried that is it giving the complete set of nutrients and then we go to supplements right but if you choose the food properly okay making sure you are eating a balanced diet mm-hmm. you will not need supplements anywhere Right. Okay, so I would not recommend giving supplements to vitamin C supplements to toddlers. What I would recommend mm-hmm. is give them fresh orange juice. Yeah, freshly squeezed. Freshly fresh squeezed. Yeah. Not not the uh, ones. not the so ones. Freshly squeezed. What it does is not only the vitamin C goes, but also fructose goes, mm-hmm. which is all uh, coupled with each other, making a complex of food items. So when the whole thing goes, the body recognizes that as safe. as natural and you know the absorption also is much better okay so when we say we i'm having a uh, vitamin c i cannot <clears throat> tell you for certain how much the body has actually absorbed and how much the body has actually thrown out it is just psychological that i am having vitamin c so i must be okay you know can have a placebo effect it's, it's very common okay yeah. so let's not go into that one let's right, let's right. choose a better lifestyle let's buy things properly 
Right. So, so the, the she also asks us a few more questions regarding, uh, you know, uh, when children are teething, uh, should we introduce parboiled vegetables to keep them chewing? Absolutely, absolutely. I think uh, with uh, changing times, mm -hmm. right, we have got more busier. Yeah. Right now, the both the parents are working. Mm -hmm. Now we are into nuclear families. Yeah, right? because because she also asked that uh, our packaged purees better for babies uh, to start when they're starting solids because you know we're talking about par boiling vegetables or packaged purees Absolutely. this this, this par boiling mm. thing is from my grandmother's and her yeah, grandmother's true, things true, right yeah. what we are doing currently is we are buying those ready made baby foods yeah yeah okay? yes Right, and they're feeding. And uh, what is the consistency of that baby food? It's absolutely mashed, I think. Yeah. yeah. Just put it on the thumb, uh, yes. tongue. They just swallow. Right. Mm. We need to go back to our ancestors. Mm. Yeah. We need to go to that parboiled uh, vegetables. Yeah. I am very happy that uh, the question has come. Mm. We need to go back there. The children need to hold and bite. Yeah, yeah. You're right. And nibble on it mm. with whatever teeth they have. Yes. This is all with the development of the temporal, uh, temporal mandibular joint, with the development of muscles of mastication, mm -hmm. with the movement of the tongue, with the swallowing. It's, it's all coupled. It's all one uh, show. We must, must go back to the ways of our ancestors. Right. right? So parboil is absolutely recommended, highly recommended. Right. So, um, so we have another question from one of the viewer. Uh, is it safe to introduce adult toothpaste to children? And when should we introduce them with toothpaste? That is adult toothpaste. Okay. Now, now things have changed in the last decade. And what has changed regarding toothpaste is that the recommendation is to use adult toothpaste for children also. Okay. Yes. The amount of fluoride that adult toothpaste has, it is above 1,000 parts per million. Studies have shown uh, fluoride more than 1,350. Mm -hmm. is beneficial anything less than 1350 parts per million in a toothpaste is of no good okay. right so we have this lot of uh, toothpaste for children they have 700 parts per million of fluoride mm -hmm. okay so this is basically of no use mm -hmm. the children teeth must get the same fluoride so now how do we control mm -hmm. the amount of fluoride because there's always a worry that uh, the child will swallow fluoride yeah, yeah and true. in the united kingdom the the packaging of toothpaste is it's written contains fluoride is poisonous mm -hmm. it's yeah, ingested yeah, yeah. falls through, yeah. the poison center the reason is there's always fear of swallowing mm -hmm. so the recommendation is from first tooth that erupts you can start using toothpaste adult toothpaste mm -hmm. but you have to control the size okay okay the recommended size is uh, is you know you just smear the toothpaste okay don't put the whole traditional from this end to this end mm. okay just smear the toothpaste all we need is to get that fluoride in the toothpaste to touch the tooth okay that is it so we call it as smearing it mm. when the child reaches three mm. right by that time the child is already has full primary dentition right mm. then you can come down to p size size of a p that much only mm. And you brush even though the child swallows that it does not matter mm -hmm. study say, says that uh, it's even beneficial because the child is actually having systemic Sorry. effect swallowing yeah, effect yeah, yeah, yeah. only after six you can use as much as you want the reason because is the child has already learned to spit out by the age of six so so six is the age that you would recommend that you know we can start using the uh, equal amount as an adult yeah. and Okay. I would recommend uh, six is yes theoretically, mm -hmm. but I would recommend to see your child if he's yes, able to yes, spit out. Yeah, if he's not able to spit out, stick to the p, p size. P size. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So so, that, so, yeah. so does that also uh, can can you also throw a light some light upon um, how frequently should children clean their teeth? Okay. Now, like we have seen with the diet, is the teeth uh, the food gets stuck to the tooth, right? And it has to be removed. Okay. Now, during the day, children will eat so many things. They will drink so many things, right? Just like how in our little experiment, Dr. Lari mm -hmm. uh, told us that eating that banana actually cleared off the, the apple. Yeah, yeah, the true. Biscuit, it did, right? it did. Yeah. So during the day, all these kind of things happen. It's only at night when the child has the food and goes to sleep. Okay, and the food remains stuck to the tooth for twelve hours, uh, for eight hours, seven hours, where the damage starts. 
Okay, so if you ask me how frequently should I clean the tooth, my answer to you is make sure the tooth is pick and span clean before the child goes to bed. Oh, because that is the danger time. That is a danger zone. Okay, so it it, it doesn't matter if you brush it three times a day, but if you're not brushing before bedtime, it's no good. <clears throat> right. We have more questions. Yeah, we have a lot of questions. <laughs> We're just uh, I'm running out of time. So uh, I think, uh, Dr. Fawaz, um, uh, we would just want to uh, summarize. Can you just summarize what we've uh, uh, we've done today? I mean, just okay. a, a very little summary, and then we'll wind up the session. The I mean, session. Okay. For the summary part, I have another exercise for you. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> so so here here I have some beverages. Yeah. Okay. And like I'm telling you to choose a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. Right? So I want you to, you know, I have so many beverages with me. I want wow. you to, I have a, a carbonated drink. I have a fruit juice. I have a flavored milk. I have another flavored milk and I have a cultured milk. Okay. okay. So I want you to choose this, any of this product and just basically tell me how much sugar this uh, product has. Just pick any one. I, I've here. chosen this ice peach tea here. And it says uh, total sugars are um, 27.6 grams. Wow. 27.6 <laughs> grams. 27.6 grams. That is the total sugar, right? Yeah. That means, uh, there For is a 300 ml can. So what it means total sugar is the added sugar. Yeah. The added yeah. sugar that is what has been added by the manufacturer, and there there will be certain food concentrates the company must have used. So they have some intrinsic sugar. So total sugar is 26. Now you will be surprised that the recommendation by the uh, uh, National Health Services UK is that you should not have more than 30 grams of sugar in 24 hours. Wow! So this is just like so this is like for the whole day. <laughs> just for the whole day. Yeah. Just for the whole day. Okay. Now, now the reason is that if you have this, you have this drink in your mouth, it brings down the pH to acidic. Mm -hmm. That is where our mutants, streptococci bacteria, they start mm -hmm. functioning. So if you have a lot of these drinks throughout the day, the bacteria has so much time to work on it. Yeah. Right? So to summarize, I would like to tell my viewers right, that dental caries is a chronic and a cumulative disease. Cumulative disease means just like cancer. Right. So if you have cancer, you will not know in the beginning you have cancer. Right. And the cancer will develop and develop and develop and develop till at times it shows the symptoms. Sure. By the time you show symptoms, it's already too late. And then you have to cut things away mm -hmm. and you have to have radiotherapy, chemotherapy. Same thing is caries. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I feel in pediatric dentistry, mm -hmm. caries is my oral cancer. Yeah, so okay. you're equating so we, it to that yeah, uh, so severe severity. Yeah. So caries, you will not know. In children especially, you will not know the caries has begun until the child starts complaining of pain. And that is already too late. And then the child has to be brought to the clinic and the child uh, behavior is an issue. The child has to be taken into general anesthesia. Mm -hmm. Depending on the lifestyle the parents have uh, uh, introduced for the child, uh, it, it's a great burden for the government mm -hmm. to put up uh, a clinic and treat all these cases which require a full uh, oral rehabilitation. So, so like I said, Food is what decides it. Yeah. The diet is what decides it. You choose healthy diet, you choose uh, food that is rich in calcium, rich in vitamin D, mm -hmm. right? Have a balanced diet. I'm not even going to say that. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say give your child a balanced diet. Why give your child a balanced diet? You have a child balanced diet. Yourself. <laughs> yeah, because, because yeah. that is a lifestyle the children will adapt yeah, true. until yeah. they get exposed to some other lifestyle mm -hmm. and then they will choose the lifestyle so i think it's uh, my responsibility as a parent to introduce the best lifestyle to my child yeah. if i fail then i fail my child so uh i think dr Pawas, that's about the time we have now um so thank you for summing it up saying that diet is the most important thing that we have to look at when we are looking at uh, dental caries in children so uh that brings us uh, to the end of the show and um Keep watching us for uh, more such sessions on Meet Our Expert. We'd be happy to take your questions. And even after the show, you can uh, leave your comments. And, uh, and we'll answer them because we are running out of time at the moment. And uh, please uh, feel free to give us your feedback and uh, uh, stay in touch.
Uh, you can follow us on Facebook as well as um, Instagram. And uh, well, that's it from all yeah. of us now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fawaz. Thank you so much.